So, this is the fourth episode for the smart contract video. If you made it this far, congrats. We're halfway there. Maybe almost done. I don't know how many more I'm gonna do. For this episode, I have partnered with Halborn, and this time we're going to look at a real life example based on a bug that was submitted to Immunify, I think, and it got paid close to $600,000. From what I remember, I think it was $180,000 in cash or $150,000 in cash and $450,000 and the token from that platform. So let's roll the clip, look at this example, and see how it was done. Well, thank you again for sitting down with me, uh, Pablo. But before we jump into the interview, can you tell me who you are and what do you do? Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you very much for having me here. And uh, yeah, well, I'm an offensive security engineer in, in Halborn, and uh, I'm focused on the review and the smart contract most of most of the time uh, i also perform like a little bit of mobile testing and but always focused on the crypto space um here in halborn we we do that that kind of stuff and i'm particularly i'm focused on the solana blockchain everything that has to be with solana rust and and that uh kind of uh, of things i'm focused on that so yeah that would be more or less my my profile uh what we do at the end is like it's not traditional penetration testing i'm i well i i have done that for uh, about five years but but well but but uh, what i do right now is to most of the time review code uh create pocs and execute rest code just to find vulnerabilities nice okay very cool so when we were chatting before we started recording you said this is a common vulnerability in smart contracts. This was previously mm -hmm. found by Immunify, and you were going to show us an example of it. Can you tell us a little bit about the vulnerability itself at a high level before we jump into looking at what it looks like in the code? Yeah, sure. Um, well, this is uh, an example of, uh, of a common vulnerability, which is uh, found most of the times in the crypto space, but not at a technical um, a technical aspect, but most uh, more focused on the financial aspect. So this vulnerability is a business logic uh, bug, which uh, well well uh, was introduced in the, in port finance, and now is fixed. So so well is um, related with uh, financial concepts like uh, collateral, like uh, borrowing and lending, and uh, and well and and a little bit complex uh, concepts, but I'm sure that, that we can we can go and address them in a, in, a, in a minute. So let me, for me to understand this right, this vulnerability is in mm. the lending or borrowing process from a smart contract. There's a logic flaw that you can abuse it to either lend more, maybe borrow more than you're supposed to, or something along those lines, right? Not exactly what I just said, but something along those lines. Yeah, in, in, in summary, this uh, vulnerability, what, what allows an attacker is to, um, to, um, uh, to borrow um, money without uh, giving uh, collateral, without depositing any, any money there. So uh, at the end, what uh, that means is that an attacker can st uh, steal uh, money. Just free money for them, yeah, you without know. any collateral. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you said you have some visual for us. Do you want to share your screen and we can jump into it and take a look? Okay, so uh, this is the, the introduction for the port finance bug. Uh, this bug was uh, found by, by Nojob uh, and through the bug bounty platform Immunify. This uh, bug bounty platform is like uh, HackerOne or, Crowd, or, or Book Crowd or whatever, but is uh, focused on the crypto space. Um, so uh, one key point is that uh, Port Finance, for the people that, that uh, don't know what is, is a platform for lend and borrow money. You can uh, deposit um, money in there, in, in their pools, and you can borrow. Um, you can ask for money uh, using uh, that platform. Well, this bag in particular uh, could have uh, generate uh, 20 million or $25 million uh, losses. So, well, it's a, it's a good one. And uh, a good important uh, aspect of this is that uh, Port Finance rewarded Nojo, as you can see here, 
with um, uh, one hundred eighty thousand dollars and uh, forty uh, forty uh, hundred and five uh, and, and fifty hundred dollars. Sorry, so uh, it's a pretty good um, reward, and these kind of rewards are pretty common in the in the crypto space. Um, yes, yeah, so let me okay. So the the following concepts are just the, the basics of the of the borrowing and lending platforms. And these concepts, uh, what is the the lending and, and, and borrowing platform is that um, you can borrow money, but uh, always you have to deposit a collateral. And most of the times, uh, these collateral uh, must be over collateralized. What means that uh, you have to deposit more money than the one you are borrowing. Why? Because poor finance, for example, wants to be safe and don't uh, wants to uh, go uh, giving free money, you know, and that is what, what happened here. Um, the, another key point of this is the LTV ratio. This is the, the loan to value ratio, which is the uh, borrow uh, and, uh, and divided by, uh, sorry, a collateral divided, uh, borrow divided by collateral. Um, and what happens if the if this ratio goes uh, under a threshold? Your obligation, your position, your your loan can be liquidated. Okay, so that is an an important point because can be liquidated at a discount. So uh, other people can buy your uh, loan with a discount. And that is uh, key points that that is going to be, um, well, and be using here. So um, what do we have here in Port Finance, we have uh, multiple structs that um, manages all of, all that information. Okay, this is the the struct, the reserve struct. This struct um, stores. You you have fields. This is like a, this is a Rust structure. It's like a C1, and uh, you have here, uh, liquidity, the all the collateral of the reserve of the of the pool that you are uh, giving money, okay, for borrowing, and um, it has an important field which is reserve config, and this reserve config has also more fields like uh, loan to value ratio uh, ratio, which is the one that, that uh, we have talked uh, a minute ago, okay. Uh, has also liquidation threshold, which is a threshold that um, uh, remarks in what point can be liquidated. Okay, and uh, the uh, collateral discounted, uh, the the liquidation bonus that you can uh, be using for uh, the liquidation. So if you are going to pay the loan of uh, someone that that uh, has uh, his loan liquidated you are going to uh, get a reward. You are going to get a collateral discounted, okay, which is calculated with liquidation bonds. Um, okay, and here you have the obligation strike. The obligation strike is the one that um, defines a user position. So as you can see here, um, it has a lot of uh, fields here that uh, we don't have to, to focus on that. But we have the deposits um, RI with all the deposits that the the user has done and all the borrows that the user uh, has done. Um, and also we have here allowed borrow value, uh, which is the, the, as the comment says, the maximum borrow value at the weight average loan to value, to value ratio. So is the um, the maximum borrow that you can that you can get uh, with this obligation okay and it's calculate, calculated this way uh, is the, the the sum of the deposits plus the loan to value ratio of each deposit which is at the end is like an average one okay uh, you have also an healthy borrow value which is uh, the um, uh, the 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 um, uh, is the, the, the threshold in which uh, a user uh, borrow is going to be uh, dangerous for that user because uh, can be liquidated. 
okay? And, uh, well, um, we have set here borrowed value, which is all the borrows, the, 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 the add of all the borrows that a user has done, okay? So here we have the vulnerable function. This function, um, at a general uh, simply put, I would say, uh, this function, what has in consideration is just, as you can see here, the borrowed value, the deposit value. So all the borrows and all the deposit, the, the summatory of that, and the allowed borrow value. And this, uh, this function is being executed when a user wants to, um, um, to withdraw his collateral. Okay, so if you have a collateral deposit in a, in a reserve and you want to, uh, and, and you have borrowed something or whatever, but you want to uh, withdraw this uh, collateral, this function is going to be executed. This function is going to be called, okay? Um, and, and in this uh, calculation is where the bug is because as I said, I'm going to repeat it, um, it only has in consideration the total borrowed value and the total deposit value. But the point is that it's not having in, consider in consideration the LTV of the reserve that uh, you are going to withdraw the money from, okay? And that is uh, key important, it's very important. Um, as you can see here, if, is, if an obligation has, if you have two, uh, two reserves and you have um, a high LTV in one of them and a high bonus on the other one, and you, um, you withdraw all the collateral from one reserve, because you are taking in consideration the, the overall amount of borrowing and, 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 uh, and, and deposits and, and collaterals, you're not going to, with this function, you're not going to be focused on the collateral that you are withdrawing from one reserve, but the total, the general collateral that are deposit in that ob obligation. So uh, at the end, you can withdraw all the collaterals that you have in every, um, in every reserve. You, you have deposit your money into. So how do we fix this? How Port Finance uh, have, uh, have fixed this? Introducing the concept of the LTV value of the reserve that you are trying to uh, get the money from. So this is the fix. The fix, as you can see here, we have now one argument that is withdrawal collateral LTV which is, um, um, it's, uh, it, it's been used in the calculation of the amount that you can uh, extract from the, these reserves, which is, um, well, uh, here you can, you can see it, okay? You, you have a load borrowed value. Um, you have a delta between the total borrowed value and the allowed that you, that you can uh, uh, withdraw, and then, you are dividing it by the LTV. So at the end, you are having it in uh, consideration and you are not uh, only processing the overall amounts, the, 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 all, all the amounts that you have in, in your obligation. And, um, and well, and that would be all uh, with this presentation. So is it fair for me to say, if I wanted to find logical votes to this one, I would have to analyze how money is being processed within the contract, right? So if I'm looking for logical loans, I'll have to follow how money is being borrowed, where is it, you know, how everything is being calculated and see if there is a pretty much a math problem of what's being borrowed against what's being in reserve and not given to the user, right? And just following that that's money right. through the code is how you are able to identify these loans. That's that's right. What, what we usually do is to, uh, well, we have, uh, for example, this with bot finance, okay? Um, we get all the code of the application that you want to, of the smart contract that you want to audit. And first of all, try to execute it in a regular way, in the way that is uh, meant to be functioning. Like a normal then, way, yeah. 
yeah, like the normal way, and then try to manipulate that that um, that little variables or fields, or try to go modifying it in order to uh, to find that that uh, uh, that that problems that bugs that are uh, breaking the application. Yeah, and is, that that would be the scope. Yeah, is this vulnerability? Is this the only time this one has been found, or has this similar to this one? Has it been found in other contracts too? Because I think I've seen the stuff uh, on the news similar to this, where you know some contracts have been completely robbed because they they the, they were not doing these um, the proper way. Yeah, well, uh, this exact vulnerability, I don't have uh, information of of being um, um, exploited in the in the wild. But yes, it's true that these kind of vulnerabilities, these uh, mathematical and financial concepts uh, being uh, tampered or, or being uh, triggered here, uh, they are uh, very, very common in the crypto space. You know, um, yeah. you, you are, you, uh, being a developer, you are always trying to do your best, but sometimes uh, the, the maths here is not going, uh, they, they are not going to, to be as exact as you are wanted, right, uh, right. as you want it to, to be, you know. And what, yeah. based on what you show me, what I understand is like, there's going to be, I'm sure there's going to be some complex math in some of these contracts that's harder to understand and you're exploitable. Mm-hmm. But based on what you showed me, this just looks like a very simple math mistake and just a simple check would have, you know, fixed the issue. So it just looks like it's, so for someone who doesn't have a crypto or like smart contract background, I think mm-hmm. of these issues are these like complex math issues that are, you know, you have to be a math wizard, but it, based on what you showed me, it's just a, exactly what you say. It's a logical thing to understand how much money is coming in and how much money is being put out. And if those two yeah, are matching, right. you're just pretty much robbing the entire contract. That's right. Yeah. For someone that, that is not, um, uh, that is not trained in the crypto space, uh, it maybe it's going to be, more difficult than than the, for us, for example, that that ha, that we have yeah. some experience in that. But I think the, the the most difficult part is going to be the setup. That is, you know, like yeah. understand what is happening. Uh, wh- where is the port finance contract being executed? Wh- where is uh, where is the 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 the, the, mic, the microchip that is processing that smart contract you know that that concepts yeah. maybe are the most difficult ones but if you are used to review code i think this vulnerability maybe you you can be used to these kind of vulnerabilities yeah for sure awesome this is great i'm gonna look into these more i think we're gonna i don't know if there's gonna be more of these videos hopefully we'll do more but this is giving me a mm-hmm. good place to look into these things. This is really cool. It's, I, I've seen these kind of vulnerabilities. I've always seen all these Immunify payouts. And I've always wondered what they were. But this gives me like $180,000 yeah, awesome. plus $450,000 in tokens. a lot of money. And you always wonder how difficult they it's are. And not not to say that it's not difficult at all, but it just seems very simple and straightforward to find. And I'm sure there's yeah, more yeah. out there. But you know, but, but it's going. It's like uh, going deeper in the in the rabbit hole. You know, you, you yeah. have to go digging and trying to find because uh, these kind of contracts, maybe they have like, uh, I don't know, uh, I'm going to say, for example, 10,000 lines. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot of code. You have to review all. You have to keep the focus on what is going on. And, uh, and well, and, and it's, uh, it's hard to find that box, but maybe to understand them, it's not uh, that hard, you know? Yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this for me. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll get to do more of this in the future. Well, Ben, thank you very much for having me here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, we'll work on it. We should have it in next week. And then, um, okay. yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. That, that would be great. Uh, you know, just just to, to tell you something uh, personal, um, uh, it's uh, it's an honor to be here uh, for me. Uh, you know, I have uh, viewed your videos in the 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 recon, uh, the, the live recon, and all yeah. of that. Yeah, and uh, and man, I have to say that that I don't know how do you how do you do some some kind of things. You know, it's, <laughs> I, I I create content on TikTok and and in Instagram uh, regarding cybersecurity, but more like in a um, uh, for for regular people. And uh, and man, 
uh, I would love to do that, that technical, <laughs> that, that, yeah. that deeply one. Yeah. See, I would rather do the other way around. I can't talk to normal people. Man. I try. It's really hard. I do, <laughs> I, I do the same thing on Instagram. It's not really? as easy. Yeah. But hey, man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this. Yeah. And thank you for coming on here and helping me out with the, with one of the episodes. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an honor, as I said. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Okay. That's it. This was the fourth episode. I think I'm going to do a few more. I'm not sure. I may even bring some guests on my stream on live recon. But in the meanwhile, do me a favor. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, like the video. Leave me a comment and let me know what you want to see next. Again, this was, I think, the first time we did an actual example of a vulnerability from the real world. So if you want to see more of these, let me know. If you know of any vulnerabilities I've seen on Immunify and the news that you want us to explore, drop it down below in the comments. And we'll take a look. So until the next episode, peace.